So I was posting that everything about me and uh, it, they were so involved, like you know, now they call themselves the in-laws. They were so involved in my life. To see Kaya Nikama Hatuna Hisia, you know, you want to break down someone and to a point that it gives you joy. I think that is actually living like an animal in the wild forest. Mstana mrembo. Mstana intelligent. Mstana smiley natoka south, natoka east and west. So umu mbuvi akosoko, amekua kibanda, ama ame, ameenda soko, amepata vitungu, ama what can you tell us? People would like to know. They... So what's up Saudi TV family? We are happy today. We are here with a beautiful woman, a mother, a leader, a lady of valor. Msichana ambaye anajituma ndani ya Kenya, wengi wenu mnamjua kama daughter wa Mike Sonko. She's proud that she's she was born in that family but she's doing things that anajisimamia mwenyewe. Good to see you Saumu Mbuvi. Welcome to Saudi TV. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Asante ni sana hiyo. Yeah. Uko haja mambo vipi? Umepotea? Ujakuwa ukionekana kwenye mtandao, umekuwa loki kidogo, but uh, some of us who follow you closely and know what you're doing, tumeona umekuwa kitembea Kenya. Can you tell us what have you been up to? I have actually been uh, uh, giving mental health talk awareness uh, through uh, through my foundation Pamoja We Can Initiative. So we've been going to different counties uh, inspiring, mentoring and creating platforms for these young souls before us, the, the ones in school, these students, so that they can actually be openly, they can openly share their problems, they can openly know that it is okay not to be okay, so that they don't suffer in silence. At least from that, then we can have a healed generation. Yeah. You're saying it's not okay to be okay. Uh, you yourself, you came up uh, some time back on social media, Ukashia Kwamba, you've been going through a mental issue and you, you're now a champion, you're helping other people try to overcome that story, uh, that problem. Can you tell us what's your story, what was the issue and how are you coping right now? Um, uh, the, uh, the reason why I decided actually to do mental health is because I'm so passionate about it. And then also being one of the people that suffered in silence for a while and I didn't know how to share my problem until the point that I went openly to seek help from my parents and I had to, they took me for treatment. So after that is when I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, which um, it, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a disorder that has a, two different stages. It has the mania and the hypomania stage, where sometimes when you're mania stage, you're very creative, you want to do things that you love and you're, you're very active. But when you're hypomania, you're very stressed and depressed. So with my experience and what I have gone through over the years, right now it's 10 years with it, and I, 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 I seek help, I seek counseling, I seek, um, I am on treatment, which I take. So I feel like now people should stop suffering in silence. That's why I came openly, because it is something that I have gone through. I've known how to manage, and that self-realization journey was the beginning of my healing process. And it was the beginning of now knowing how to control my condition. And that is why I'm really out here to share that light, to share that uh, knowledge, and to inspire and to actually create a platform that every young person out here can actually speak openly and to beat all the stigmatization surrounding mental health illness. Yeah. We're going to have so many issues about mental health and right now I know Kenyans are going through different issues, especially young people, mamba ya kukosa kazi, they have all, they've, they've had maybe traumatic uh, childhood or stuff like that. Uh, what, what are you doing or what are you sharing with people? Kwamba weze kujua, wazazi, for example, weze kujua, unajua sikuizi ukiona mtu maybe anafanya vitu wazeleweki, unasema huyu ni bangi, huyu sijua amefanya nini. How, how are you trying to maybe bridge the gap? I'm trying to bridge the gap because um, what I'm trying to do to bridge the gap is um, first I want to make this uh, 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 this young people, young generation, uh, people my age, that these things are normal, that everybody faces these things, and uh, so that they shouldn't feel like they're alone and suffer in that small. Uh, wa you suffer in a cage that you've locked yourself because you know the mind is a powerhouse, and the more you feed negativity to your soul, maybe somebody or even parents uh, don't uh, believe in you, they create this uh, such harsh environment, then it becomes worse for you and that's why you find so many people taking 
uh, the option of actually killing themselves because they feel like it will never be a better life, but it's just a bad day. So I, I, I am, I'm trying to make uh, this, um, uh, I'm trying to make the platform where I can involve them and talk to them and they can openly share their problems even to parents. And I would want also the parents to know that these things do, do happen and then so that they can come up with a healthy way to help the people around them too and the, the children around them also. Yeah. You've, you've said it's been 10 years with the, with the condition. Yeah. Uh, how did you discover it? Maybe from uh, how, what, maybe what, what triggered it? Uneza maybe uh, okay to share with people what triggered it and, and how did you uh, come to be diagnosed with it? Um, uh, before that I was really suffering silent. It was so hard for me to share my problems. And most of the times I, I, I'm, I'm a very, I put my problems to myself. I don't like uh, telling people what I, I'm going through. So that time I had built a lot of pain in me. And uh, I was going through grief uh, also of losing a mother. So there was so much going on and I was so young for it. Until the point that I, and then that, to a point I was having some, sometimes I was just feeling like, let me just end this by, you know. And uh, there was a point I tried to, I was still young, around uh, 15. I tried to do an overdose and it backfired. And you know, it's just because I couldn't even, and then I couldn't talk. I was just lost in darkness and I never felt like they should, there would be light. And... That is when I realized to seek help. I, I, I was taken to the hospital. I, was, um, I had a very bad mental uh, breakdown. Uh, but I, I, I got one of the best doctors who treated me and put me on treatment. I went for therapy. And, and now I, I just feel like, you know, mental health, you know, it's a new thing for this generation because it wasn't, no people could not talk about it then before. But if we can talk about it, that is one of the uh, process of actually creating a healthy environment. It, it is a way of actually beating stigmatization if you make it a normal topic every day. Yeah. I know uh, the last three or so years have been quite uh, difficult and complicated for you. As a mental health uh, a champion and person who's going through the treatment of uh, your, your, your condition, how, 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 did, how did you cope with that moment of your life when things just were thrown on your way? You had a very unstable, say, kind of relationship. How did you cope with it? Uh, to be honest, it wasn't easy because it wasn't something that I ever imagined I would go through it. Um, I had plans for my life, but God had a, I had other plans. And um, it broke my heart. It, um, I, had, I had several mental breakdowns and... It wasn't easy, and especially that I had even children depending on me. I had now to come out and fight. You know, it's like you're going for a battle. So I had to find a way just to accept that, you know, these things do happen. It's a normal way of life. Because in, in this generation, there are a lot of things, factors, you know, that are, are, are challenging. Even relationship is one of them. Relationships now, nowadays, uh, marriages are failing because of two... Um, there's so many things exposed in, on uh, social media platforms. So uh, I came to understand that it's just not me that is going through that problem. So it's just a bad day. It's not a bad life for me. And uh, maybe I will meet the right person and all that. So it's just sometimes you just have to uh, talk to yourself and tell yourself all these things like you are farming, that things are going to get better. So that you don't live in that dark room and the, you keep on uh, pumping negative thoughts in you. And I, I did a lot of therapy. I, I, I decided to change my environment, change my friends. And then I, w I went and put and stayed around people that actually impact me in a better way. Yeah. So you've said about uh, that. How did you cope as a young mother with, with a condition? How was it for you? Did you Ulifika maybe point to kasema, hey, wacha watu hiyo enda wakai kwa grandmother yao, na grandfather, ama ulikuwa tu na kanao, sa ilo ulikuwa una go through your therapy, maybe counseling and stuff? Mm, I was with them, but I couldn't be alone. I was feeling like I'm, I'm lost in just a, in my own just dark room. I don't know what to do. And then I, I had, like I had a very strong support system. My sisters are there for me, and I have a very supportive auntie who's like a mother figure also. And uh, she was there for me, and she was there so much for my kids. I even my kids know her like as a mom. And that time, you know, I, the, uh, the breakdown, also you feel so much pain that, you know, you feel betrayed. And so it, it actually, I, 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 I actually, I came out of that silence and started speaking out. If I'm not feeling okay, if I'm feeling like this, and that is how I got help. Yeah.
I know for you it was a bit uh, you were a bit lucky because you come from a family that were means to afford doctor. How does it make you feel ama as a person who's running an organization to see kuna mtu pale ghetto ako na condition but they can't access help. What wanasema wa huyu ni mwenda wazimu, huyu amevuta bangi. And and what can we do as a people just to make everyone have an equal opportunity? Thank you so much. That's a really really great point. It's expensive, expensive um, treatments that you can find because kuna there are procedures like ETC and it's it's very expensive. The medication, come on me, my medication monthly I spend like thousand monthly. So you imagine peer memes are gonna complain. You know sometimes the things get tough for everybody. Come on me when you're complaining and getting those medication. So that's why I am trying my best to do all that I can. First to create a platform so that people can come out and talk about their problems. And then we try and find solutions together. Together, so that company, now we have to incorporate government to reduce the taxes of this medication and treatment, and then government to also have free counseling centers. Because like, even when I was doing some research with a few people, members, Kamagarisa, there is a counseling center when you some, the counselor may, as we had the Onekanoko for like three months, you know? And these are things that people are going through every day. People want help, people want to talk, but they don't know where to go. They don't know how to find this help. And also, I will try and incorporate some of enough so that we can actually giving treatment to these people who need them that, but because we have a therapist so whatever they will be recommend the, whatever they will be assigned they will try and find a way to get you the treatment that you need yeah on your organization uh, how are you, how are you running it i know it's a very expensive venture kuzunguka kutembelea wale watu ambao wanataka help mm -hmm. and just creating awareness are you unaifandwe mwenyewe kutoka kwa pocket maybe unataka donors ama government how are you doing let me tell you something when you want to do something and you're passionate about it i will always advise anybody go find somebody who you share the same passion with and uh, that is how I actually came up with my dream team because they are passionate about helping and uh, they love what they do. So we come together and we become our own well-wishers. And if there are people out there they want to support, we have a well organized. So people come as mostly the people who support me are people who share the same passion. And most of them are people in my circle, my friends. So if we want to do something, we come as a group. We say, for us, the directors give this amount, they give this, and we achieve whatever goal we attain for that. And uh, it, it's, it's a bit straining, but now we are, we are incorporating, the, we want to now target also different organizations that have CSR that will be ready to work with us, even other organizations that are ready to work with us, and that is how we'll actually uh, find a way to help people. Yeah. I know some time back uh, to kio na interview na wewe you announced that maybe you have political ambitions na ukatuambia kwamba unataka kuingia pale your home constituency ambayo ni makadara to maybe vie as a leader do you think maybe out here maybe watu wanaweza ona hey saumu anafanya hivi because anataka kuingia kwa siasa is it that kama ni nataka kuingia kwa siasa sai basi then that means i wouldn't even be passionate about it when i was young so this is something i have um, Put my, I have been aligning myself because, you know, the same thing I say, and I'll say it again, leadership is just not something you wake up and say you want to be a leader. It's something that you have to be passionate. It's something that your soul has to lead you there. And if your soul is really, that is your calling. So you feel like you are supposed to be out on the front lead to take the path and just try and make amendments of how we can help people around, how we can help um, the young generation, how we can help uh, mothers out there. So it's... it's um, it's not because my father, even if he wasn't there, then I would have still gone and followed my dreams and passion. And that involves leadership. And I won't never shy away from it and I'll never run away from it. When the time is right, I will go after it. Yes. Uh, what, what support are you getting, for example, from your folks? Will say, definitely, you come directors of your foundation. You come together and contribute money. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what help are you getting from family and uh, most definitely from your father? Uh, I haven't yet first in started involving the family because now we, this is when we were taking shape, yeah? And uh, since we are not even yet a year old, uh, this is something I have really been working towards. So now I have to come with a proper, uh, um, proper structure where we want to head. This is what we want to attain. Because right now, currently, now we want even to incorporate um, 
th those members that will help. So that is when I want to put him in when I want to approach him when, you know, you, you can't always just, my father is one person who's very practical. You can't just give him something and say, this is what I want to do without you actually, um, without you having the, a, pro, a proper structure. And that is what I was working uh, towards. And that is something that he does in line. So it will not be so hard for him to, because it's something he's passionate about. So it will be um, together, let, uh, he will, I know he'll uh, really help in future. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. Kando tu na iyo, just to get a few of the experiences, going through the 10 years phase, you may go through your mental issues. Uh, how has the social media, especially, in Ajua Saizi cyberbullying is very big. How has that contributed maybe ku, to some of the triggers and buzzers in Akupatia the Manix? Um, social media can be a very toxic place especially when you're trying to find uh, mental stability. So it was a place, that's why there's a point I just deleted everything and I took a break. And you know, that is how you try. And if there's anything you should fight for is just to seek that um, uh, peace of mind. And I, I, I just took a break from social media and took my time just to be okay, just to, you know, to, fi to just find a balance that... And, uh, the level I have attained right now, I don't think even social media or anything that I see on social media can even shake me or make me feel bad because I came to realize, you know, that is how some people are. You know, there are people who are just, they are so negative because them themselves are going through things, they are fighting battles, but now they don't want to come out and speak out. Now they come out and throw that same negativity on people out here. You just hate a person for no reason. You just create your own perception and you come out and, and that, is why, that, that is why we should actually try and spread so much love and light so that people can just start healing and just normalizing, just being kind enough, you know? It's, it, 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 the, if you ever want to be anything in this life, at least be kind. I always say at least be kind because people here are fighting silent battles that we don't even share on these platforms. You can see sometimes we're just sad people with happy pictures so we try and just anytime somebody's spreading negativity you try and just beat it out with positivity yeah what could you say was your lowest ama has been your lowest ever moment on social media i know you've had a few times of trending here and there in terms of negativity and bashing people blame even for maybe things you didn't do or things they didn't know what was your lowest moment on social media when i when i had the the breakup uh, with my ex, baby daddy, it was one of the most painful ever period to go through because I had gone through a lot in that relationship, a lot of dark moments. So people just had their perception and every day I'd check and that is the time now I had to know to fight for myself. You'll check there's a story, oh, Saumu, did Saumu, Saumu was the one, Saumu. And you know, they don't have the other side of the story. So, and uh, there was a point I was so bitter, I was trying just to share my side of the story and what I was going through and all the violence I faced. You know, I came out and I started speaking out. But then I realized even, you can never heal if you stay in the same toxic environment. You have to just take yourself from that situation and then get to just be around happy people, positive people. So cyberbullying? A very big issue, especially come on a go through a mental condition. Yeah, cyberbullying is actually a very serious uh, thing that is going on right now. And um, you know, when the social media was introduced to us, it, um, you know, we didn't check the rules and regulations and all that. We just we came in and adop adopted to it. And now Unapata, it's, it has become like a, a toxic platform where now those people even suffering in silence are now coming out showing their bitterness and throwing their bitterness on people on just based on their personal perceptions, you know. So, and you find that these things, sometimes people get affected mentally. And that's why I say if you feel like you're not okay, social media is one of the places that you shouldn't be by that time. You know, with the social media, it, it created a fake uh, that there is there's something called perfectionism. Perfectionism, perfe perfe perfectionism is only for God. There's nothing like being perfect. We all have, we all have a few flaws, you know. And you have to accept the person the way that. That's why you you're told if you meet somebody you just like or you accept that person with the good and the bad in that person. So we fake uh, uh, perfection, faking so much. I think we're just making the place so much toxic. And bullying. And, and, and if you're going through problems, stop uh, ranting it out on someone else. Seek help first, you know, and stop this. Uh, you just feel like you'll always, you're always right. And you know you are living in a negative dark room in yourself that you actually spreading that same darkness in other people uh, to other, and to other people that you don't even know about. Yeah.
Did that change maybe your routine and the behavior on social media? Squeeze you post very less of your maybe private issues, family, what to eat. Nini, did that maybe, did that change your routine or did it, what did you learn from that? And, um, um, oh, thank you, actually. Um, you know, I, I feel like I also created that opportunity for them to be so judgmental in my life because I, I let out so much. I was letting out on my uh, relationship where I am. So I was posting that everything about me and uh, it, they were so involved, like now they call themselves the in-laws. They were so involved in my life that Nikakuja could realize now it's, it's what you post and what you control when it comes to these platforms. Yeah, and what you allow. So now I just post what I do, what I am passionate about. So with that, whether you judge or not, I don't care because I know I'm doing something just to you know, free myself, feel good, and just to spread love and light. Yeah. Good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. She can. She can. Na, najua hata sisi we are on the social space and sometimes we post uh, we post stories about people about what they are doing in their lives and in the content creation space mm. kuna like uh, for example I, uh, back in time i saw edgar edgar obare was really into your story and following up on it D did you maybe come to to, to to just move on with what people were following especially blogs and people, and save someone like Ed Gobari who was posting you very regularly, mm -hmm. did you maybe forgive and just move on and say, here you look at the past? I, of course I did, because I didn't take all those things personally. And uh, when I saw that is when now I, I decided now to find healing. Mm -hmm. And also now just try and spread out that love and create, a, create an environment where now people can speak up their problems. And uh, uh, for Ed Gobari, he's doing what he's doing. He's earning a living from that. So he has to do whatever he's doing. But now, I think we should be sensitive because um, with people, we should stop. Uh, you know, this, this is it's getting out of hand. The, you, can, you, can have that, uh, you can have the platform of doing it. But at least we are all humans. To see Kaya Nikama Hatuna Hisia, you know, you want to break down someone and to a point that it gives you joy. I think that is actually living like an animal in the wild forest. Yeah. Any lessons probably you can tell an 18-year-old girl, 19, 21 years, while I'm about pity what you've gone through, any advice you can give them in terms of being on social media, putting your life out there maybe? Um, I'll, all to all my young sisters and brothers, um, all on social media and all, it's, it's, a, it's a good platform that you can use, but use it to your advantage, use it for good, like uh, use it to inform yourself, to do research on it, and uh, don't, uh, don't um, use it to create this fake um, personality, fake, fake standard of, and then you want to use that to judge people with it. Be real with yourself first, be real with your life. And I think use social media for your own advantage, for a way that you can do something good. You can, you can, you can use it to impact someone. Uh, if, uh, so you can use it to impact someone in a better way. And uh, you can also use it maybe to just use it for um, um, creating uh, like a, a way of living, but just don't use it just to 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 break to break down people, to crush people. There's no good in that. There's no good in that. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'd tell them all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As as we almost uh, wind up, what what should you expect from Salmon movie maybe in the next two, one year, in the next two years? And then the next five years, Nigeria 2027 in Akaribia, what, what should people expect from you? And how would you like, for example, uh, the Kenyan public to support you or just to help other Kenyans? Because we are, you're a brother's keeper, you know? Yes. We have to help each other. Yes. Um, my my long-term goals, I am, I am really going to go for leadership so that I can be in that position of creating these opportunities that I can stretch out to help people. And uh, another long-term uh, vision that I have right now is I want like, to have mental health awareness centers in every 47 county. And if I can incorporate the government to introduce mental health awareness as part of the curriculum, so that even the teachers, you know, so that it can be so normal, it can, we can put a platform where we can talk about it 
and this will be solving a lot of problems, will actually uh, beat a lot of stigmatization, so people can be well informed. You know, sometimes uh, people do things because they are not informed. So once we create this awareness, it is going to be very impactful also to these teachers that actually diminish children in school, to parents that create an environment that children cannot be comfortable at home. Uh, it will be better to, to have this as a normal topic and also to try and make, uh, to work with the government Ministry of Health to reduce the taxes imposed on these medicines, these depressants, these um, the Q-tipins, the ones that people use for the bipolar disorder. So it is, it, it's, a, it's a major challenge. Um, for my short-term goals right now, I just want to go through all the 47 counties, creating platforms and impacting so many lives as I, as I can. And um, also just, just to spread love and light. That is my main thing right now. Yeah. Tukimalizia, tunajua fans wangu will bash us up kwenye comment section ni spoiliza hii swali. They will ask, msichana mrembo, msichana intelligent, msichana smile inatoka south, inatoka east adi west. So umu mbuvi ako soko, amekua kibanda, ama ameenda soko, amepata vitungu, ama what can you tell us? People would like to know. You know, these are the things people ask on them. Uh, so cool in Kata, Sezika, so cool. I am just um, right now, I'm taking time to just to learn myself, to do what I love, to empower myself, and uh, that's to focus on also being a better mom, being a better daughter, being a better sister. And because I was, I was so much in a rush of looking for that life, and uh, with the lessons, I appreciate, and I'm not. I will wait for God's timing. Watch I would like to know, and especially as a prominent person, a public personality, DM yako inakaje. Mafisi wamejaa pale, unapata DM ngape say for in a day? Hey, DMs now zinajaa. Zinajaa sana. But now, unazisoma zengine unacheka, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a form of entertainment for me sometimes. Unazia, unawana, kuna watu lakini wakona mistari kuinja, ya? They should keep on. Watu zengine ziyeko kwa malaya. Zengine ziyeko kwa, wengine wa, they just should be artists. Kuna watu wakona mistari kuinja. It's, sometimes it's very entertaining for me. Wow. Kwa Kenya ndo huyo, mnambua zidi kutuma DM, zita somo, lakini, bahati, Ia takutana nayo pale maybe kwenye street, kwenye umenda dina mahali hapo. Mr. Wright akipatikana, atapatikana ata, ata inshallah. Inshallah. Mr. Wright atakuja, what, I, it will just come, itajipa yenyewe. Nyota itajipa siku moja ya mapenzi. Mm. Eh. Na hiyo nyota ikijipa, what, what, what probably, from all the lessons you've learned, all the frogs you've kissed, what maybe unaweza ambia tu watu tip kidogo wa IBS here what is your kind of ideal man like ama not even your kind like the kind you dream of unasema hey this is my ideal guy hai bwana bwana mimi sipiani mwa Kenya hapa i can't unaweza penda labda ndevu jamaa me ndevu ndevu hivi eh hata kitambi bora ni he's an integrated he's a principled man yeah a person of integrity but lakini me, what I look at is uh, if someone is raised well. Kwanza before, look out your appearance, ama what he earns. Those kind of things are just uh, extras, you know? It's not a must. Ile lakini, he just has to be first well principled. Because right now, you know, unajua mimi as a, as a woman, as a single mother, I'm not looking for fun anymore. I'm looking to create a better environment for my children and for myself. So I would want where I am, I am at peace, where I get peace, and where I can get growth, where ata kama hana pesa, hana kazi, but he's a very well principled person, and then he has dreams, then we can work together and get to achieve something and actually be happy in future. Pole sana, najua tumekuchomea DM itazidi kuja, lakini sasa ndo hali ya maisha. Tukimalizia, tell us how can people maybe get to access your foundation? Are you people who are going through mental issues, mental disorders? Na usikuja kumkatia ujifanya uko na mental issues na uinge kwa DM. Utaongelesha na watu wa foundation. How can people reach your foundation? Maybe are you on social media? Do you have a website and how can the, the, can you engage the Kenyans? Uh, we have a website. Uh, no, but we, we are now making it active. We have a social media page, Pamoja We Can Initiative that I always target, and uh, there's also, sorry, excuse me, there's, we also have an email there. Uh, we, have, um, we have the number, phone number there, of uh, one of our representatives, 
where also we will want if uh, someone has a problem and wants to someone to talk to we have a therapist in our group uh, where we can guide and if, if uh, someone has lost hope and we will find uh, rehab centers that we can work together with because that is one also of our, our main goal because you know right now when people are lost and hopeless they seek hope from substance abuse and that is what we are trying to curb out and we are trying to also work work with people we want to have a personal touch not just an organization that just does things and leave that's why we are doing we're creating these uh, mentorship programs and doing a follow-up up and down because we uh, want to be involved not just doing things for doing things yeah we are working towards a, a certain goal which is to create mental health awareness and to make it an open topic to talk about it yeah Thank you very much, Saumu, for talking to us. It's uh, very inspiring to see a young lady like you doing stuff and helping people, helping our brothers and sisters. Until another day, Saumu, I may chat to me. She'll pick up a story, Kidogo, I may be anything we do, at, ama anything she does, that I call na Twitter, and I call na share na nyinyi kama Kenyans. Until next time, this is Sauti TV. See you again. Hi, beautiful people. My name is Saumu Mbuvi. I'm a mother a future leader and actually a co-founder of Pamoja Wikan Initiative. And we are an initiative that focuses on mental health awareness. And we want to share out, um, we want to share out mentorship programs and also create a platform where people can talk about everything they go through. Because I want to say to everyone out here, it's okay not to be okay. And the only journey of healing is actually seeking help. And uh, let's be our brothers, sisters, and keep us share love and light. Uh, thank you so much, Naopenda-san, and stay tuned on Saudi TV.